Hello! If I look a little bit windswept it's just because I've gotten home from work and I've realised that I have a really busy weekend so I need to film this video now. Um, so I apologise for that. I'm going to talk about uh, Empire of Storms and the Assassin's Blade today um, and what I thought about them. Now I got these as gifts for Christmas from my partner um, as he knew that I had the rest of the books in the series um, and I was keen to read sort of the next book on um, but obviously I am aware throughout this whole discussion of the controversies surrounding Sarah J Maas and the diversity in generally fantasy. Despite the controversy surrounding the books and surrounding Sarah J Maas and her sort of lack of comment on um, what she's written, um, I still f managed to find some kind of plus points in the story. Not that that takes away from the importance of um, the points that have been made just that for me um, I noticed these things in the story as well. So I'm going to start with the oldest book chronologically which is The Assassin's Blade which is actually a collection of short stories um, detailing the time before uh, the first book began. So I found these helpful to read actually before I read Empire of Storms because there are some characters that are referenced in that book that we meet here first of all and I think without that kind of context I would have been very lost. I think there were one or two stories that sat with me emotionally more than the rest of them. Um, I didn't feel like they were shockingly brilliant but I found that they explained a lot of backstory that was kind of needed but they didn't really pull me in um, as much as perhaps the other books had. The other thing I found that we kind of know as readers that it's all pushing towards one moment and the fact that I'd also read you know the the main series I knew what was going to happen, I knew what it was leading to so it kind of dulled that emotionally for me as well. I still feel like it affected me emotionally um, but I just don't feel like it was as hard hitting as if I hadn't read the other books. Now on to Empire of Storms um, which is the latest book in the series and from what I've read it's definitely not the last book in the series. There are plus points I found um, to this book mainly uh, in the form of female friendships. Um, they grow quite strong in this book whereas they hadn't been um, that strong beforehand. In particular between Lysandra and Aelin um, and Manon and her uh, 13 uh, which are actually my favourite characters are the witches. They're just really interesting characters. The way that they react towards each other is just really refreshing. I find that you're kind of walking through the the stereotypical uh, main character kind of storylines and then you get to the witches and it's suddenly like a bit of a breath of fresh air. This book, I will not deny it, it gave me feelings. I cried three times, maybe four times. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. You may have noticed me always mentioning relationships and how much they interest me in books and that's because I just get hooked very easily on relationships. The feelings this book does have downsides. This book has a fair few downsides. Um, one of them is the fact that every single romantic relationship seems to be a heteronormative relationship. And as a bisexual person, that's very boring to me. Yes, yes, the relationships are written in the way that emotionally grab me, but they are heteronormative relationships. I have had enough of reading about heteronormative relationships and if I have to say that word one more time I will scream. On to the next, rescuing women. Now it seems like women always have to be rescued in this book. You have a freaking assassin for god's sake. The women in this book will seem really strong and they can defend themselves and yet they always seem to need a man to save them and that frustrates me. As a woman that frustrates me. As a feminist that frustrates me. The plot is somewhat convoluted. Um, it's very easy to follow but you can kind of see where it's going. You can see all of these these things coming together. It didn't stop me from enjoying the plot but it just meant that I was kind of already there before it happened. Obviously the last point is the lack of diversity. I read this book trying to look for anything that could be taken as a diverse character that was also in the same league as the main characters and there just wasn't really one. Um, in the previous books, I don't want to spoil it too much, but characters of colour die uh, quite regularly to sort of further the, the plot of the main 
white characters and that frustrates me as well. So overall, a lot of frustrating points about this book. It didn't stop me feeling. <sighs> now whether I get the next book in the series, <sighs> I can't do it in good conscience. I want to know what happens, but at the end of the day, supporting diverse books means a lot more to me than just finding out what happens to another white fantasy character. I don't have an excuse. I enjoyed the book, but I acknowledge it's highly problematic. So that's what I think about those two books and the entire series of books. Um, let me know what you think. Um, if you want to comment below, we can have a conversation. Um, I'd really like to know your thoughts on it as well. And until the next video, bye.